Hey you and welcome to my channel. My name is Tina and my aim is to improve your drawings just like others have done for me when I just started out. In this week's video we're continuing the eye tutorials, this time with some lion's eyes. I will be using soft pastel sticks for the underlayer and pastel pencils for the details on top. Now I'm mostly using the Stabilo Carbotello pastel pencils and just a few of the Faber Castell ones. This is to keep it easy to follow along to and if you don't have all the different brand pencils, which you don't need by the way. I'm using my favorite soft tool by Pan Pastel to blend the pastel sticks out and smudge them together a little bit. My favorite one is the oval shaped tool. This one gives me a good flat surface that's not too big and with the edges I can make fine lines in case I want to show off the fur direction right away in the underlayer, which is always handy. Now on to the tutorial. By now you've seen me apply quite some dark pastel on the paper. This is because we always want our underlayer to be darker than what we want our end result to be. The trick here is to look for the mid-tone in our reference photo on the area we are applying the pastel at that time. This way the highlights will still show up and you can still add some shadows on top. As for the blending, always blend from the lightest color to the darkest. So in this case I start with the lighter patches around the eyes and work my way to the dark brown. This way I don't have to clean up my sponge in between each color and I can just keep going. It really sucks to have to snap out of your creative zone once you're in it, so I'm always looking for ways to keep the snapping out to a minimum. When everything is blended out, it's time to start on the focal point of our piece, and those are the eyes of course. I left these out when applying the soft pastel sticks because I like to have a little bit more control in these small detailed areas, so I only use the pencils here. I'm using four main colors for the eyes, a dark brown for the edges, an orangey brown for the mid-tone value, an ochre for the lighter part around the pupil and last but not least, black for the pupil and the area around the eye itself. So I start off with these three base colors for the eyes, blend those out with a blending stump since that gives me a little bit more control than the soft tool would and add in the pupil after that, blending the pupil out with the blending stump as well. With a creamy yellow I'm adding in some of those subtle lines in the iris already to give some more definition to it. Now after that it's time to get in the dark area around the eye. I'm using straight black for this because there's nothing to see in there, except for the highlight on the lower eyelid, which we will add in on top of the black later on. Now don't forget to blend this out as well and blend it into the edges of the eye a little so that it looks like the eye sits right in there, as it does in real life. After that I'm just refining the eye a little bit more with some more of that dark brown on the edges, some of that creamy yellow for those little lines that we want to define some more and an ivory color to go over the eye on top to get that reflection in. I'm using a blue here very subtly to get in some reflection on the pupil with a blue color. Since our eye is almost done here, I'm starting on the fur around the eye, the lighter part first. The fur on top of the eye overlaps the eye a little bit so make sure to add that in to make it look very realistic. One thing to look out for here is that you don't fill up the entire area with fur marks as you still want your underlayer to show through in between some of the fur marks. That's why we add in the underlayer after all. When the fur above and below the eye is done I'm adding in that blue highlighted line just beneath the eyeball itself to make it look like that part is reflecting some sunlight. And that's about it for the left eye on our drawing. Now let's move on to the right one and I'm not going to talk about this one in depth since it's a repeat of the left one. Just adjusting some colors here and there to have it match to our reference picture. This would be a great time to remind you to hit that subscribe button on your screen if you haven't done so already. It helps you keep track of when I upload new videos, which is every Friday at 5 p.m. Central European time and it helps me of course by growing my channel and reach more people just like yourself. Giving that thumbs up a tap also helps a great deal, so thank you if you have done so. It really is greatly appreciated. Now back to the tutorial where we are going to start the fur on top of the left part of the face. Since we made our underlayer dark enough, the fur marks that we're adding on top of it really stand out. This part is a little bit blurry because the focus is on the eye itself in the reference picture, so we're going to mimic that by softening the marks with our fingers. This way you'll still have the indication of fur, but it won't be as defined as the rest of the fur that we're going to draw. For the eyebrow fur, let's just call it that, I'm using an ivory color first to get in the first layer of fur, which is the lightest, apart from our highlights at the very end of the piece. 
I'm using this ivory all over the patch where this lighter fur shows. Make sure to switch up the direction, length and curve of the marks as I go so that it stays natural and realistic looking. When the lightest fur is drawn in, I'm switching to a dark brown color to get in the darker hairs in between some of the lighter fur and on the two darker patches. This will give them some extra dimension and more definition. Switching to a warm brown color after that to get in some warmth and some more dimension on the brow there. And then switching to a grey color after that to mute everything down just a little bit because we don't want it to get too bright. And of course adding another layer gives it more dimension again. More dimension means more 3D looking, which in turn means more realistic looking. Last but not least, we're going to add in some ivory again, just to accentuate those lighter hairs on top. They got a little lost underneath all of the other layers, so we'll just add these in on top again. For the lower left part of the face, we'll repeat the same process only with darker colors and a little more lengthy fur since the fur is longer on that part of the face. So first going over with an ochre color to get in the first layer of fur, and then going over that with a dark brown color again to get in some definition and another layer of fur. The ivory comes in at the bottom here since that's catching some light as the jawline sticks out a little bit there. I'm blending this all out a little with my fingers so that it's not too sharp. Fur should be soft in my opinion, although the highlights will always be a little harsher since we don't blend those out too much anymore. After this part is done, I'm adding in that little part just underneath the tear line, I believe it's called. We're going through the exact same process as we just did for the fur next to it. So starting with the ochre, going in between with that dark brown and putting the ivory color on top to get in some of those fur marks that are reflecting some sun. Now onto the bridge of the nose. And I know I'm going to sound like I repeat myself a lot here, but we're going to do the exact same thing again as we did on the lower left part of the face, only adding in some colors. So we start off with the ochre again to get in the first layer of fur here. On the bridge of the nose, it's really important to keep an eye on your reference picture because the fur changes up a lot around the edges and curves, especially in the middle part. So always keep an eye on your reference to make sure that you're following the right direction. This way your end result will have a very realistic and natural feel to it. Here is where we change the colors a little. Since the bridge here, especially on the curved edges, is darker than the rest of the face, we're going to use a very dark grey instead of our dark brown. This will get it to look way darker there than if we were to use the dark brown. Don't use the grey all over though, just in the darkest areas according to your you guessed it, reference picture. After that, the ivory color comes in to get in that fur that catches some light on top of the other fur. Make sure that you can still see your underlayer peek through a little, this will act as another layer of fur, which will make it look like there are more layers on there than that we've actually added in with pencils. Handy things those underlayers, right? Now here comes an announcement of stupidity. I forgot to turn the front view camera back on for the right part of the face. I let the side view running though, so I'll let it play from here on, but I'm not going to talk about what I do much since that's an exact repetition of the left side and you won't be able to see it so clearly because it's further away from the camera. Sorry for that. I promise to not forget to turn the front view back on next time. See why I said that you never want to snap out of that creative zone once you're in it? That's when you forget to turn your camera back on. Or maybe that's just my forgetfulness, who knows. Anyway, I hope in the first half of the phase something was helpful and you've learned something on that part. And there's nothing left for me to say but to wish you a great week and I hope to see you again next Friday when I'm back with a new video. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and I also have a lot of other videos on my channel that might interest you. So definitely check them out. Next Friday, I'll be back with another video. See you then, and in the meantime, I hope you have a great week.